two, one. And we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday and the sisters interview. My name is Ashaxi. I am a Laurel from Ontier and my sister Rifkin is a Pelican Knight from Ontier and we are the sisters interview. Tonight we have as our guest Duke Torquil Kana. He's a Lion of Ontier. He's reigned as King of Ontier three times and as Prince of the Summits twice. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, we usually start these off by asking um, what your SCA origin story is. How did you find the SCA and what made you fall in love with it? Uh, oh, I didn't fall in love at first. Took a few times. Very first time a friend of mine said, hey, I'm going to a 10th birthday party of a birthday party medieval thing. And I thought we're going to some kid's 10th birthday party and it's going to be a medieval theme. Didn't know anything about the SCA, obviously. There wasn't a 10th anniversary thing, but the local canton um, was doing a little uh, demo about the SCA and it's the 10th birthday party thing. Anyway, I don't remember too much because I thought it was really boring. Uh, kind of interesting, but not my thing. Hung out a little bit, ate some medieval chicken. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, that was the first time. Then later, um, I had a roommate who knew somebody in the SCA that was starting the Shire where we lived. And uh, brought me to a couple of things. Still, I wasn't too interested. And he said, well, we'll go to a fighter practice. And uh, a few months later, went to a fighter practice in a gym. And, oh, I think maybe 70, 78, 77, 78. And, uh, Honestly, it was probably the boringest thing I'd ever seen. So again, not quite my thing. I eventually went to work at Yellowstone National Park. While there, you know, obviously before the internet and anything like that, um, riding back, back and forth with my sister, she said she found this amazing group, met this amazing guy, and the letters were all about this group she had found is so much fun. And this guy that she's going, this guy is great. You know, he's, he's the one and, and everything. Eventually, I, I come back to Longview, Washington, which is the Shire of Rivers Bend. Found out that this friend she had met was my roommate's friend who tried to get me to go into the SCA, Cormac of Claremont. Uh, Cormac Shadowwalker, who's uh, also a pelican, who is now my brother-in-law. And I said, oh, yeah, Max, I've known him for years. And my sister, who is uh, Mistress Liliana Fedrovna, said, what? I've wasted all this time? You could have introduced me years ago? <laughs> so anyway, then I started going to things because when I came back from Yellowstone, I had no place to live, so I was living with my sister. And uh, no car or anything, so we, no, I had the car, she didn't drive. So we'd go, go to events, and eh, I liked the archery. I was a jewelry, jewelry, but I didn't want to really do jewelry in the SCA because I felt that was cheating. So I wanted to learn some things like that, and. Uh, Still not interested in fighting because I was bullied all my life and I felt fighting would be just another form of bullying for me. You know, why should I let these guys beat on me when I've been beaten on by bullies all my life? I was I was four foot ten, 92 pounds in high school. I was I was little guy, I was 70, 75 pounds every year junior high. So I was always picked. And it's, I didn't want to do that. Um, but 
my friends kept, you know, putting me in armor and say, oh, no, it's fun. This is different. This is great. Uh, It's not as bad as I thought. And uh, then we went to three mountain spider practice. Um, in Rivers Bend, it was Dar and Dusk and Hightower. Um, I credit them for kind of getting me you know, the bug because I would ride in their little, uh, little tiny uh, Ford Bronco, driving up to uh, three mountains, get the fighter practice. And uh, okay, you had Montfred, Ludwig, Melton, uh, and Steinbrenner. So, you know, the movers and shakers at the time were all, were all there in three months. And uh, it was a little bit better, and they'd throw me in armor, hit me, and they'd say, Oh, you're a natural. I said, What, a natural getting hit? You know, okay. <laughs> so, I'm, Mostly I tried walking and it didn't take until Craig's driver. When I walked through, we were, in, we were at a uh, winery. We walked through a tunnel of grapevines, went through the other side, good big and license in the building, armor out front. And it was, it was felt like I stepped back in time. I was in the Middle Ages. That's what I hit. Great striker. And uh, my friend started talking to a lot of people. And new people asked me questions. And I said, I don't know. Let's go ask somebody. They probably know. And I started doing that. Boom. I became Chatelaine. I was Chatelaine for five years. So, you know, Craig's driver was where it set in for me. I can't remember what year, 79 maybe, but from 76 to 79, 79 was when the bug hit. And fighting came a little bit later, but, uh, you know, I, I wasn't like most of the nights where, oh, I always wanted to be a knight in shining armor, you know. Eh. Uh, I was more arts and sciences and archery and things like that. that that's my part of the story. And I wasn't Torquil. Uh, the first name I chose was Dwayne. Uh, and nobody knows that, but uh, uh, I just took it out of uh, from the Knights uh, of the Round Table. So did you say Gawain? Your 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 sound is kind of going in and out. Did you say Gawain? Gawain with the Y. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, Lancelot's illegitimate son on the round table. And uh, I thought, ah, that's kind of cool. I'll take that. Then I was in a play, I was an actor. So I was in play Ceremony of Innocence. And I played an actual character weakness uh, being part of the doll. And I was so used to being called Torquil, I eventually took that and sort of his persona into my persona. And uh, that's where Torquil was born. Mm, again, around 79, 80, 80, 1980, I think it was, 80, 80, 81. Origin story. Very cool. Rifkin, I think you're on mute. Uh oh, is that better? Yeah. Okay. I think you cut out when you said who got you in armor. Who who was that? I'm sorry. That's Dar and Duskwin Hightower. Okay. Um, they had some really cool armor, black and red. Again, that's probably why I chose black and red, even though Montford was also black and red as my my knight, my master. But I think it was set in from Dar. High tower because I thought that was really cool. He has some, he said, because, you know, at that time it's carpet armor, it's uh, just a piece of a front and back tabard thrown over some stuff, knee pads, no, no real armor. So uh, he had what I could, would consider real armor. And, and that's kind of what 
got me started in, in the fighting. And I was left-handed. So um, it was hard to find left-handed stuff. So I had to learn how to fight right-handed. And the first, first time I fought right-handed, or one of the first times after I'd been left-handed for a while, I went to throw, I threw this nice snap and it was my shield. And it was to Sir Garen Darkwood. And I hit him right upside the helm with my shield. He goes, what the hell are you doing? I go, oh, I thought that was my sword. And he looked at me like, don't you know the difference between a sword and a shield? Man, this guy, you know. So, uh, but it was because I was, I was used to that left hand coming and uh, now the shield was in my left hand and I just threw it, not thinking and bang. <laughs> You're muted again. We're just like all, all the sound issues tonight. Well, I keep muting myself because I, I'm concentrating on um, How did the fighting bug actually bite you? Because it sounds like you were very hesitant um, to embrace it. Well, I, again, you know, I was, I was bullied. So I, I felt that this is just, you know, gives free reign for them to pound on me. But uh, watching Kriegs drivers. So I get to see it's multi-weapon, multi-weapon tournament. So all different weapon styles, weapon swarms. Uh, that was really cool. I, I was going to better fighter practices and uh, I, I, I really don't know when it exactly hit, but, uh, oh, yes, I do. So I'm borrowing Steingrim's armor, um, Steingrim Stellari. He loaned me his armor and I'm fighting in, a, I don't know if it was attorney or fighter practice or what. And I'm fighting Torgal and I'm blocking, blocking, blocking. And, and I actually lived for quite a while until he just pasted me. And as we started walking off, Garen and maybe Dublin and a couple other nights went, went up and they, they said, what, did you think that was Steingram out there or something? And Torgal said, no, the kid's good. Yeah. Chills up my spine. Oh, made me feel good. I think that was, that was when it hit because, you know, what a compliment. Yeah, it's good. Even though he didn't know it, but I'm older than him. <laughs> they, they called me the kid for a long time. Is that just because they thought you were young or new or? They thought I was young. Uh, early, my, my, my 20s, late, I was late 20s. Um, yeah, they, they just thought I was, you know, 19, 20, 21, and I was 28. I just looked young at that time. Okay. So uh, people that aren't from Montier don't know who Manfred is, but like, Manfred um, is sort of a legend. How did you get hooked up with him? How did he become your knight? Or well, a master? Uh, yeah, Ma master uh, Montfort Craig's driver, first king of Montier, first duke, uh, first lion. He... Uh, he was in charge of the Craig's Driver tournament where I got the bug. And uh, so he did all the speaking. He warmed up the crowd. He told us what to expect, what we're seeing, what the fighting of the SCA was. And uh, there, there was no such thing, at least for me anyway, as peer fear or anything. I didn't know, you know, anybody from anyone. So he was the guy to talk to. Uh, yeah, eventually I, I got talking to him and uh, he helped me in armor. He made, made me <laughs> build my first helm. So I'd have my own helm. Uh, it was really ugly. It, all it had, it was very simple. Just this uh, round top, this face, no holes, no bar grill or anything. And eye slots that were cut and folded forward 
So not only could I only see forward, I couldn't see down because the cutouts were pulled forward underneath my eyes and, uh, and no holes for breathing or anything. That was my first helm that I used for a long time. I don't know how I did it, but I think it helped with my defense. Um, but uh, yeah, Montford helped, helped with armor. Uh, and then I believe through Ludviga, because Ludviga was his buyer, that um, I, I ended up, uh, and she was uh, Liliana's friend, my sister's friend. So we, we all got into a group and uh, I think she helped facilitate uh, the squiring to Montfred. And, uh, and then I learned you know, how to make swords and uh, other armor pieces and things from Montfred and casting. Uh, Montfred did, did some casting. So all of that I, I learned from him which I, I knew some of it from school, from um, art, art school, but, uh, but this was different. And this is what I wanted to learn, something different, something not that I already knew. So, so I guess that, that's how I got, got into Montfred and uh, became his choir. Very cool. Are we muted again? What's happening? No, you're not muted. Okay. <laughs> you were going to ask a question. And, and, and I hope you can hear me now. I, I put a little bit closer, but now, now it's like right in my face. So. Good, good. It is better now. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm also, the way I speak is, is kind of hard to hear. Like I said before, like Elon Musk has um, Asperger's and stuff. So I kind of monotone and uh, I'm hard to understand. Well, you should know that, um, uh, oh my God, I just blanked on his SDA name. I'm looking at his. Uh, um, Forgel. Forgel, God, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> his Grace Torgel uh, says, yes, you were impressive right away. He's watching. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, Torgel, Torgel gave me all my, what I consider my best compliment. Not only that, that first one about no, the kid's good. But when I took a Pierce work class from him and made my first Pierce work on, on a helm, um, which Thorne gave me a, a jean for, I asked, what, what's this for? He said, that helm's gorgeous. I, I finished the Pierce work with my um, with Alaric holding a flashlight so I could finish it for a tournament or something. Uh, Torval saw that and he said, I'm not going to teach any more Ithra classes on Pierceburg. And I said, why not? He said, I don't want to teach my competition. <laughs> what a compliment. So thank you again, Your Grace. So uh, your Pierceburg is incredible. Your, your helmets are kind of legendary. Um, I, I, how did, did, did you develop that over time and just sort of fall in love with that kind of metalworking? Well, uh, it, that was all Torgal. Um, and then, and then I started teaching it as well. Um, so I, I was hoping that I was teaching his style because he taught me and, uh, I thought it was the best. I've, I've taken other Pierce work classes just to see the differences. And I still think Torgal's is the best. Um, and then I like to add different things. Uh, I, another compliment he gave me was uh, my rivet work. He said, my rivet work is superior to his, which, <laughs> wow, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so yeah, I, I just like taking things and making them look better, I guess. But, uh, but Pierce work and then etching, uh, I really enjoyed but since I got Guillaume Barre, it affected my, my feeling in my hands and everything. So it's a lot harder for me and I struggle. So when I'm doing Pierce work now, I get really frustrated because I, can, I know I can do better, but this disease won't let me. And it's, it's very frustrating. 
What um, what would you say is your favorite piece of work that you've created? What do you look back at and think that 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 was it? That was the thing. Well, I don't know where it is, but I did a brooch, fairly large, uh, pretty large uh, uh, cloak uh, brooch thing that I did for a. Uh, Prize in Bergen Wood, um, which I, I, I became the royal patron. So, but I made this brooch because Ludviga said it couldn't be done. So, so I was determined to do the Pierce work on this thing because it it was so intricate and hard that there's no way I could um, on a, on a dome, domed piece, dish piece. To, to make it where it wouldn't pull, you know, when you're dishing something and you've got intricate cuts and you're trying to put, put the brass cutting onto a domed piece, it's going to create some wrinkles. So I wanted to make sure, you know, this is going, this is going to work. Uh, it, it turned out great. And, uh, it was just because it, it couldn't be done, so I did it. And I think that was my piece, but I have no idea where it is. I didn't take any pictures or anything, but uh, that's the one. I'm gonna take you back to fighting a little bit. Um, how, how long was your journey from squiring or whatever you, do you call it squiring to a master? Yes. Okay. Squiring to Manford um, to being offered the accolade. A little less than two years. Um, it was fairly quick, but this is this is the story. So um, we, I was Manford Squire. We went to twentieth year celebration. Uh, I'm, I was the only only person to get kicked out of the two chucks camp for being too dangerous. Uh, we were doing, you know, stupid Norse pet tricks and stuff and doing the, the fall and the axe, which has been talked about in, in other episodes. But me coming from uh, being a stuntman, I was doing some different stuff with the axe where I would run, dive, and uh, land on the axe. And the people in Tuchucks, oh, you know, we don't want our people to do that. But you know they're, they're they're all still having fun. Then I climbed a tree, so I was going to jump from the tree onto the axe, and that's when they said enough, because there's too many people that are drinking in this camp, and they're going to want to try that. The reason I did it was not because I knew how to fall on an axe. Was as a stuntman, you take precautions. So underneath. My garb, I was wearing chain mail. So I knew if anything happened, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, the axe wouldn't penetrate. It, it wouldn't impale me. I might get a bruise, but you know, you always take precautions. So anyway, I got kicked out of the two chunks. So, but as, as far as fighting, I'm watching all the great fighters from all other kingdoms. And uh, Eric, uh, as well, Arthur at the time, uh, Duke Eric from Down Under. He was, he was our, our king and uh, he was amazing, but Torgal was winning every tournament. I knew his style, but I'm watching all the other fighters. And then what I did was I took little bits and pieces from all the best fighters that I saw, that I thought were. They, they may have not won everything, but they had a style. So I took little bits and pieces, went back, bastardized them all, created my own, added um, my boxing, my wrestling, uh, belly dance, things like that into that, created a new style and nobody knew how to fight against it. That's, I think, I wasn't better than anybody. It's just that people didn't know. They, what is this? I, what do I do? And I think that's why I went from nothing at TYC to a year and a half 
the next time Eric uh, was king, he asked me to join the show. And, uh, and I wasn't ready. I didn't, uh, when he asked me to come up, he, I remember him saying, one of you is missing. And I didn't know they were asking for a, you know, a new fighter. I thought, I didn't see Monfred up there. So I'm, where's Monfred? <laughs> I'm, he was right behind me. And uh, I was brought up and I thought, everybody thought for sure it was going to be Max because he was went the farthest in the crown. But Eric asked me to join. I wasn't ready. I didn't want to say no. So I took a year vigil where I had some goals I felt I needed to meet to be a knight. And I met those goals and I was knighted by Steingrim, who is my grandfather knight. He was Monfred's knight. And uh, so that was really cool. But uh, but I was asked to join the chivalry within a, a year and a half of being squired. Wow, so there's a couple of things that I think are really cool in there. Um, doing this, this self-imposed year-long vigil at a time when vigils like weren't really, um, commonplace. Um, so if you could explain how you came to, to that realization that you needed that for yourself and in, and the goals that you set for yourself, that would be super cool. Yeah, um, I actually was contacted by the TI at the time to write a story about, about this vigil because again, it went through a, a crown and, uh, mainly I didn't know enough about the SCA. And even though I, I'd been officer and everything, I still didn't, didn't know the ins and outs and all the words. So I wanted to learn more about the SCA. Monfred, as my master said, once he saw my new style, he said, I can't teach you how to fight because my style was, I, I'd say, one, 180 is with the mace. So he said, I can't teach you how to fight, but I can teach you how to be king. He saw that in me. So he taught me a lot in, in that aspect. Then I felt if I was going to be an equal to the Knights of Volunteer, I needed to be able to beat each knight at least once, just once, every night. And uh, at, at the time, there wasn't a whole lot, so it was something that was doable. And I actually accomplished that. Um, some of them, I only, I only beat once, but that was my goal. Um, and I only knew, I think, two shots <laughs> that I didn't, I, I, I did not know how to throw a rap. That was a goal. I had to learn how to throw a rap. I'm terrible at learning. I don't see things the way most people do. I learned how to throw a rap from a person who very, rarely fights. He's not even a squire. And he's six foot three, six, yeah, somewhere six three maybe 120 pounds. And that was Pavel. Oh, Edison taught me how to throw a rap. And when it clicked, it was like the easiest thing ever. Why couldn't I learn that before? So, so I, I needed to learn how to throw other shots besides the two that I knew. Uh, learn to rap, uh, defeat every night once, and learn the ins and outs of the SCA. And I did those, and then I was ready to accept the acc accolade. Super cool. So you're you're known also for um, having a very interesting movement style in, um, on the field. Who do we have at 20 year to blame for that? <laughs> that that one was, was just me. Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, some people call it the gangsta lane. <laughs> uh, the, uh, my spine is a, uh, 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 I have 
They say I fight standing up with my head on the ground. I don't know. All different things. Anyway, that actually somebody said, you belly dance? So it might have come from belly dancing. Um, it, it was comfortable. It was comfortable for me, but the whole thing is it threw my opponent off. And they saw me do it and they froze. What's he doing? So I just started doing it and it became natural. Uh, I mostly did it out of range. Uh, I also did it because I'm short. So the taller fighters had to lean forward to hit me. So they're leaning forward or they thought they could push me over. I'm not leaning backwards. I'm actually leaning forward. If you watch, I'm leaning forward and then bending back. So if they try to push me over, then I stand up, I'm taller than them, boom, wrap, wrap to the back. So it, yeah, it's, it's just something I somehow came up with. I don't know, it just, it just happened. So um, when did you start fighting in crown tournaments? Uh, remember I fought for my mom once. Uh, I fought for Christian. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess when I, when I'm really fighting for a crown, you know, that, that was just, at, at the time it was just a tournament. Um, I wasn't really fighting in crown. I didn't, I didn't see it that way. Oh, tournament's happening, you know, um, until Ludviga and then our, the infamous fight with uh, Duke Eric from down under. I didn't realize I was in the final and all of a sudden we're in the finals uh, we had fought earlier uh, in the list, and uh, and I, I actually beat him, but it took, it was a very long fight. And then we're in crown, in finals, and our styles, if you, there's a picture of us fighting, standing, I don't, I don't know if you have it, I didn't post it, but uh, um, Eric has posted it, and we, we are a mirror image, and that's how we fought. Only he knew how a sword moved. I don't. Uh, other than that, we were mirror image, so it took forever. It was, uh, you know, there was no uh, shots that were missed or anything. It was very clean, but went into the darkness. They wanted to hold it the next day. Eric had to be at work, so we had to finish it, and. Uh, Shot right down the middle, uh, right when the marshal called hold because we're going towards the Eric ropes. As he stepped back, I fell forward and Eric won. Uh, so that's the first crown and I, I made it to the finals. And then Eric was champion. And we didn't do it at the time, but he, uh, he made me champion so he could, uh, be crown prince, and uh, so that that was very cool. Uh, sorry, Dagar, you know it wasn't a big thing back then, but uh, um, and uh, and then he, there, Eric said, "You don't know how the sword moves, do you?" I didn't know what he, what he was talking about. But what what do you mean? He says you don't know why a sword does what it does to get to where it's going. And I said, you throw it and hope it hits. And he goes, I thought so. He says, what? He goes, I can teach you how to be the best fighter in the known world, but I won't. But when I told him that, he said, boy, I was an arrogant ass back then, wasn't I? And, and what he was trying to do was to get me to learn how a sword moves on my own. I never learned. So I'm a terrible teacher, but uh, uh, I just know 
I just follow the sword. I just let it go. That's the way I fight. I, I don't know any of the intricacies on why it works or actually why how I throw it shouldn't work, but it works for me. I don't know why. Everybody says, you can't throw that. But you're off the wrong foot. You're, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Well, it works for me, but I won't teach it because it shouldn't work. That's the way I learned. And uh, that's why my fighting is really different. But people have take, taken a lot of what I do and make it, make it work for them. And that's the right way to do it. Learn from them, not from me. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's my first big crown was uh, with Eric. And I uh, uh, had, oh, five other seconds. So uh, a lot of silver roses, a lot of the biggest loser. <laughs> Being a square to a master, was there any um, contemplation on your part about to become a master or a knight? Well, that, thanks for asking that because that was brought up all the time when shortly after Eric asked me, everybody said, oh, you're taking a vigil because you want to be a master, right? Almost everybody assumed that I would take mastery because of lawn training. And mastery is there for a reason. And Monfred took master at for a specific reason. Once again, I, I had to learn about the SCA, so I had to learn about that. And I could not see myself not swearing fealty to the crown. So of course, I I was going to take knighthood. Mastery, I never even thought about it. It's everybody else thought about it for me. And they were still shocked that I took knight. There was there was really no reason for me to take mastery. I, I didn't see it. But other people just assumed that that's what I would be, was a master. I'm, I'm glad I took knighthood. Uh, that's for me. Um, I understand mastery and those masters that have taken it for those specific reasons, you know, that's, that's their choice. I applaud them for it, but I couldn't see myself not swearing fealty to the crown. Okay, cool. After you got knighted, um, was winning crown and becoming a duke your goal, or was it just I'm enjoying fighting? Let's see how good I can get. Uh, I really thought about being duke. Uh, uh, my first reign, I got to say, was amazing. Whoever would have won that one, it would have been great because for the first time in a while. Ontario had zero problems. Everything was fixed. So I got lucky. Uh, no problems. So we just had one. Plus, now I was the new kid on the block, first new king in a while, and lots of support. Of course, everybody loves, loved Ludwiga. Uh, that crown final with Steingram was amazing. Uh, I'll never forget. Throwing the killing blow, Steingrim saluted me with his sword. As he's falling to the ground, he says, my prince. And very, you know, what an what a honorable one. So, um, no, but I, at that, by this time, I'm loving fighting. I just absolutely love it to this day, still love it. I hope to fight in at least in my 70s coming up. Um, and uh, it, I just love it. I, I really do. And I'm not, I don't really, you know, what happens, what happens? Uh, I don't get up for crowns. Like, you know, everybody says, oh, what do you do to get, get ready for a crown? I do, I do nothing different. I fight the same as crown as I do any other fight. Uh, maybe a little more intense. And I want to give my opponent 
a really good fight. Uh, so then, so they'll want to fight me again. That, that's my goal. It, it's just, you know, they had so much fun. They want to fight me again. Usually it works out. Not always, but usually. Usually they, oh man, that was so fun. You know, let's again. And most of those I've already, I've lost. <laughs> so that's why it works out. That way. But uh, um, although I am competitive by nature, I know what's a crowner, especially too, you know, you, you, you've done it, you're doing it for the joy. But when I enter a crown or a coronet now, you know, after winning the first time, it's, it is for a reason. I will see something that I think um, maybe needs to be done that, that I feel I can do, or if I feel best suited for, especially in, this, in the summits. Uh, and uh, so, so it, it, at this time, it's for the people. I will fight for them so I can be their voice to get some things done. And that's why I fight now. And then for the love of it, I, I, I just love it. I mean, like, like I said, at the very beginning, I never thought I would. And then this is, this is so much fun. And I want to keep it fun. You know, it's, it, it's a blast. And it, it, it keeps me young, you know, it keeps me going. Well, I, you, you brought up your age and um, when you were, talking earlier about how they called you the kid and you were in your late 20s I was doing the math in my head and I, I feel like um, you also like a lot of the lions we've talked to have a portrait in your attic and <laughs> you are like uh, sacrificing or something uh, it's, it's this camera that I'm borrowing it it takes away 20 years but there's a downside this camera puts on 20 pounds so if you add 20 years to me, take away 20 pounds, then you got me. So I, I, I feel good. I feel really good for my for my age. I, you know, take a drink. But uh, uh, no, I I um, I think fighting has kept me young. So I think I've aged a lot in these facts past year and a half, two years, we're not doing it. I've been to one fighter practice and <laughs> got, got the crap beat out of me, loved it. But uh, yeah, now, now I'm old, so I've got to get back so I can get young again. So yeah. there's a lot of truth to that. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, I feel like I've aged uh, 10 years in the last year for sure. Um, so. You've been in playing in Ontario in the SCA for 40 plus years. <laughs> um, how has Ontario culture changed in that time? What what um, what things have you watched transform? Oh. I don't know, some good I'm not so good. It's uh, it goes down to words matter. Words matter. You can be part of somebody's SCA story. Um, a lot of people have told me I'm a part of their story, you know, as in First King, you brought me in um, as Chatelaine, things like that. People are part of my first story, as I told you, um, Torgal, uh, Steingram, Duke Eric. But now there's so many people will be walking, just, just walking at an event and say something that may be heard by someone who's new, who doesn't have things, is in a mundane tent, and they hear something said that's just in passing. Oh, let's not walk by there. That's just a, a dome tent city. And then they came to an event because they're excited. Oh, this is what I want to do. This is what. And then they hear, oh, that's that's a dome tent. I don't want to walk by there. Now they're hurt. Now they're embarrassed. 
how they might not come back. Words matter. Be careful what you say. Be a good part of someone's story. Now, if you walk by and see somebody new and not in garb, things like that, uh, proper garb, rather than saying anything, just encourage them, help them, and t tell them, you know, there's classes as, as an upbeat and a positive thing because that's how they came in. That's how you came in. That's how I came in. But later on, I and I knew people that this is, this is, I've been looking for this place for a long time. If they hear something discouraging to them, oh, I was wrong. This is how I think the SCA has changed, partly because there's so many more people. And in the beginning, it was more a, I guess, party atmosphere. Um, now it's become, Yes, a little bit more. Uh, let's all be period, please. And and that's great to be period, to learn. But this is why, um, as a recent inter interview, my my leather coat. My leather coat is a fun thing. It's not period. It looks period. People like the Vikings and stuff. Hey, you know this is cool cool looking, that's the old SCA. That was an homage to the SCA that I remembered, that I knew, because yeah, it's not period, but it's sort of period, it's fun, this is a party, you know, I'll wear it, but I'll learn. I'll learn some period stuff. And uh, and that's what we need. We are missing teaching. And uh, yeah, when, when I first started, there was, Interest all over. It's teaching. I, I I learned so much, and now you have to really look for it. It's out there. It's all out there, but uh, but you have to look and uh, and just be nice to people. Uh, people are are focused in their own world these days, understandably kind of. But early SCA when I started, it was everybody was. I mean, it, it was just, it was amazing. I don't know when it changed, why it changed, but now it's just little factions, little groups. Uh, just one thing. I would like okay. to be one thing. Um, so speaking of teaching, um, how, how have you passed on uh, your learning to students? Do you take squires and, and what has your journey with your squires been like? Um, well, all my squires are peers, we're all peers, uh, peers other than knights, and pretty much all knights. I, I was pretty much fresh out of squires uh, before the pandemic. Uh, I mean, they, they've done amazing. Not because of me, I don't think. Um, as far as fighting teaching, but uh, hopefully uh, my calm demeanor and stuff like that has, has helped some of them, I know. Uh, others grew into their, uh, their role as knight, pelican, laurel, whatever they are. Uh, most are, are, they're all knights. So I thought I was done. But then a few people have asked me during this pandemic, please, you're the only one I want to squire to. So I, I sort of took a couple, but I will take them officially once we start playing again. And squires make me learn. They make me young again. They make me want to get back in. So if, if you're feeling like you, oh, I've done it all, I'm done. I don't really want to play anymore. Teach, find something to teach. When, when they learn, when they learn something new, it, they feel good, it makes you feel good, uh, and it makes you want to keep going away, it makes them want to keep going, 
it's just an amazing circle. It's, it's, it's just great. And uh, I, I am so proud of all my squires. Uh, what is it? Peers. Oh yeah, that's a, that's pretty good. But uh, but it's not because of me. They they did it themselves, but they did it and it makes me want to continue as well. So hopefully these two new ones will get the spirit back in me and uh, I'll get out there again and have some more fun. Um, so Countess Karina wants to know um, whether you've ever experienced pure fear and how do you handle your groupies when they are starstruck? Why? Uh, no fear, fear for me, really. I do have just the general fear of people. I, that's why I don't let anyone get close i mostly it's torquil's persona it's not john so i'm a little different in the sa than i am in real life um but i'm still pretty quiet but in real life i'm even quieter uh so no real real peer fear for me only because when i first started that's all i talked to was peers and uh so i, I started at the top you know Monford was king. Well, actually, uh, Ontario wasn't a kingdom, but uh, uh, one of the first people was the princess of Ontario. I borrowed her boots so I could fight. So they just happened to fit me. Anyway, um, no peer fear for me, but as far as do I have groupies? Uh, <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Uh, just, just, just talk to me. Uh, you might be surprised. I, I know I come across as uh, sullen or quiet or intimidating. I guess I, I've heard. Um, just, just ask me a question. Just, just talk to me. Once I open up, it might take a while. It takes, it takes a while to, to, you know, pop that top and open me up. But uh, what, once you're, you're in there and, and uh, I'm comfortable, I, I'm just the same person I always was. I just happened to win a couple of tournaments that meant something. That's the only difference. I'm the same person. I'm no different. So there shouldn't be a, a fear there, but I, I realize there is. Don't be afraid. Just talk to me, ask me questions. I'll talk to anybody. Uh, I'm honestly more afraid of you than you are of me. And that's the honest truth. That's, that's, I, 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 I told that people. So, so yeah, that's why I'm always by myself. And, uh, and not very many people are close to me. Sorry, did, did my voice go again? Yeah, you tell I lean in. <laughs> lean him in. I'll, I'll lean in. You won't get my background. <laughs> I think I think that's true with most um, quiet people is that you know they're shy and they're really more afraid of you than than you are of them. And I think that's true for all of the, the legendary tea dukes in this kingdom. Um, you and Thorin both say a lot with your facial expressions, um, but you don't talk a whole lot. <laughs> Torgal is also very shy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, should we look at photos? Sure. Let me put pull them up. There we go. See that? Do you want to just sort of tell, lead us through the photos and tell us what we're looking at? Yeah, this is uh, in the 70s, uh, Bell Fountain Park. Round Shield Tournament. Um, I, I actually like this one because I look tall. I'm borrowing Monfred's uh, armor and, and things. And that is Ludviga in the furry boots. 
who fought. And uh, you can you can tell it's early 70s by that guy in the short shorts in the background. <laughs> and, and those boots are also a tip off. Our mom had, had those as her after ski boots in the 70s. So yeah, a lot of people had those after ski boots. And then that blue dress in the background, those are the dresses that I knew when I first started the SCA. Those were that's those boots make me happy in, in so many ways. <laughs> this is when I get Garen with my shield. Now, that's how tall Garen is. I am standing up. And I'm using the mace because Monfred used the mace. And uh, so that's what I fought with at the time. And one of the first times I'm fighting right-handed and in the heat of the battle, I just threw a snap and it was with that big, heavy, heavy, heavy rimmed shield <laughs> against Garen's, I, I guess it was his grill. I think it went underneath his arm there in, into his grill. What the hell are you doing? So <laughs> that's when I said, well, oh, better fight right-handed. Dak and Lau, I was uh, made captain of uh, Lau's guard, and uh, that's that's me uh, closest to the camera in the in the black, with that. Uh, that's not a hat. That's my hair. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of it. Not anymore. So. This was when Eric asked me to be, uh, asked me into the Order of Chivalry. Now, everyone assumed that I knew it was going to happen because I'm wearing white. It, I, it's, just a, it's just all I had. I, I, I just put it on and, uh, and I'm biting my lip. I, I had no idea. Uh, it was just, a surprise, a shock, and I don't remember a thing from the time that Monford pushed me up there. I, I don't remember anything else. Just that I wasn't ready. And that's Gunnar in the background. So I, I, I just, I'm still sort of mulling over how incredible it is that you are self aware enough to know you weren't ready and to ask for that vigil. I just, I think that's super cool. Well, I was also told that if I didn't accept, I would not be asked again. So, so that was, <laughs> so the vigil was my way out. And uh, I, like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing people did back then right. in the eighties. And uh, so, so yeah, I, uh, that was, that was kind of my uh, get out of jail free card. <laughs> oh, I'll take a vigil, but my vigil itself was awful. It was at Alpine Pass War. I had everything set up. One person came. Oh. Something happened I didn't know about because I was stuck in my tent. And uh, they, it was a big to-do with the queen at the time. And so all the knights were busy with that and they just forgot. And uh, uh, but, uh, Valdar uh, of Oslo came. He was the only person that came to my vigil. Wow. So did that shape you in any way? Like, do you make an extra um, effort to go to vigils or are you going to have like a reverse vigil on the 40th anniversary of your knighting or? Oh, probably not. What, all it did was, I hate to say this, but reaffirmed what I always felt about myself, which was, I I don't exist. Uh, nobody likes me. I'm not. I'm not really here. I'm. I was. I was always in the corner. Um, if I left, nobody knew I left. If I came back, nobody knew that I had even left. It, it, I just felt like, oh, I guess it happens here too. So sorry. It it, it just made me made me feel like uh, 
nothing had changed. Well, I'm sorry that that super sucks. I got over it. So, <laughs> and uh, and had a great nighting, which is what this is. Uh, um, it's in my home barony of Three Mountains, my grand night, Steingrim, and my night at the bottom, Montreux. So everybody's there. And it's when my parents decided, even though they, they'd been going to SCA and stuff, that's when they decided to be in the SCA, was once I was knighted, that was a big deal for them. And they jumped in started Shires, my dad became a Pelican, uh, my mom was uh, cooking and uh, making garb for everybody. Yeah, they went in with both feet and um, into their 80s, they, they kept going until my dad took a fall. And that's that's what sidelined them. But, uh, but yeah, this, this nighting here uh, did it for them. Oh, we lost that last thing that you said. Oh, thank you. What did I say? I, I, I said that my parents, uh, th this is what did it for them to come in, in the SCA was this nighting. They jumped in with both feet. Awesome. One of the infamous trips to Australia war and we're this isn't the rest stop. This is just a stop. But we, we stopped at the rest stop and we were going to leave someone there because they were being really annoying. And we took a vote. And they only came the rest of the way because there was one more vote for than against. So so everybody made it. And uh, it, was, it was a blast. We had, we had good fun. Uh, on the way back, I believe Steinberg's van broke down and we're stuck in Wickenburg, Arizona for three days. Everybody has, uh, well, everybody from Ontario has a crazy um, caravanning to Australia story like that. It's crazy. Yeah, I've got a really good one with Skeggy, but now this one, that's, that is me in the black and the silver helm. I'm actually borrowing a helm. And all those people broke through I was the only one left alive. I was king and I decided to start running. So I ran, they're all chasing me. I can hear, you know, some of the fast ones catching up. So I'd let them catch up then turn around real quick and hit them, run again, hear another one sort of catch up, turn around, hit them until they surrounded me. And then somebody yells, single combat. Well, look how many people there are. So somebody counted, they're going through, they're going through, I lose my legs, they're going through, they're going through, finally there's only four left and then I lose my arm. So I yield and I come running back to camp and I yell, bronze my sword, bronze my sword. Man, you should have seen it. They were all, everybody in Ontario was showered, eating and Torco goes, you're the king everybody's talking about. And I thought, wait a minute. You heard the story of it. There's some king out there beating everybody in single combat by himself. And you didn't think it was your king. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but, uh, it was pretty amazing. It was, it was fun. And then I got, everybody was getting pictures with me. So, but I thought this one really showed that, uh, that, once they broke through the lines, it was just me and uh, I ran, ran for my life. It was actually just me and Edward Safran. And he goes, run, I'll hold them off. So, yeah. And that's how legends are made. You should, you should hear, um, uh, oh, was it? Uh, oh, yeah, the story of that, of, of, that exact episode, and they didn't realize it was me. Oh, it was Ambrose. Ambrose is telling this the story, and I'm listening to it, and it's not quite the same because it's embellished a lot. Makes me even like <laughs> sound better. 
And then I said, well, that's not exactly how it went. He goes, oh, yes, it is. I learned it from somebody who was there, Gerhard Kendall. And I said, Gerhard wasn't there. <laughs> but uh, so then, then I told him that the king was me and he got embarrassed. But I said, no, I like your story better. So yeah, you hear that a lot. So these are some stints as champion of volunteer. Uh, the first one is when Eric made me champion after I took second in crown. He is in the background. Uh, so yeah, the, these are pretty early, early ones. Uh, mostly no beard, just the, just the porn stash. So yeah, I, I was I was champion five times. Lawrence champion uh, twice, I think. Uh, Eric champion Steingram. And uh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, being champion is cool. All the perks and little headache. But it's a whole year of standing behind the thrones. For the year. For the year. A lot of standing. Ah, yeah, a lot of standing. That's that's the hardest part. <laughs> standing in court. So tell me, what's the story with the with the um, white head like coronet thing? What is that? That is a halad that Lao made me when after, after that that is my Coronet. Uh, that's that's after winning my first crown. Uh, Lao made that that for me, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a period uh, for a chieftain or something like that, and uh, a lot. So Lao uh, just it's very intricate, very amazing. It's really and, cool. Yes, and she made that for me. Um, it might have been just been for my knighting. Now, now that I think about it, but but I used it as my first coronet until Torgal made me one out of the silver that I won at the silver uh, silver dollar tree. My uh, three crown three crown finals that I won. Uh, there was you know five others that I lost, but uh, the first one with Steingram uh, went. All three rounds, uh, final one, I, I took his arm and then uh, he swung and, and I did my uh, lean back, miss, come forward, hit, and he salutes me, my prince. The second one, uh, top right, my right, um, Dagar, this is uh, Montengard, I believe, anyway, uh, way up in Canada. Uh, there wasn't a lot of fighters, and uh, I was fighting Dagar, and he was just so excited to be in the final that this is the only one where we're actually throwing blows, because the rest of the time, I, I asked, are you, are you ready? And he tenses up and says, yeah, and he's wide open. And I, I asked him again, are you ready? Are you sure? <sighs> And, he, and he, he's got his shield over here and his sword over here, nothing right here. And I go, coming at you. Oh, good. <laughs> and that, you know, uh, kind of anticlimactic, but he was just so excited to be in the finals. And then the, the bottom one, my last crown, Avalok had my number. Early in the tournament, he destroyed me. Literally knocked the win out of me. <laughs> and oh, our first fight in, in the crown finals, best two out of three, he destroyed me. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to win. And then I realized, wait a minute. He's been studying everything I do. So he knew exactly what to do and how to be. So between the uh, first and second and third rounds, I ran around the area um, yelling to the crowd saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
And then I thought Avalok completely different. Not my style, just all out forward, no, no defense, just all offense, just and never let up. And he was blocking everything, waiting for me to let up, take my step back like I do, and hit me. I never stopped. I just kept throwing, 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 throwing. faster, 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 faster. And then, then started going hard and came in when he thought, okay, he can't throw another shot now. And I did. And that's the only reason I beat Avalon. He had my number. He had me that day. And, uh, and he's, he said some really good things afterward. So I gave him my actual silver, silver rose for that fight because I knew he was the better fighter. I just had to do something different. That's a really smart way to fight that. That's, that's, that's interesting. Those are my three crown finals. This is the silver dollar, dollar finals. So the first one is me and Torgal, and the bottom one is me and Han the Mighty. It was a three-way round robin. All I ever wanted was to be invited in the silver dollar tourney at the time. It was, at the time, it was some called it Dukes are better. Well, I wasn't a Duke. Um, Steinman was king. I was his champion. He didn't want to fight in it, so he petitioned that I fight in it. And uh, and then I kind of became the crowd favorite because I fought so different. Who is this guy? And then that, if, as you look, the bottom pitcher, the crowd just got bigger and bigger as we went on because. Everybody's saying, hey, there's there's some guy, you know, they didn't know who I was. And, uh, you know, I, I we don't know what he's doing. I remember when I fought, well, my first fight was uh, Devin of Beckingham and uh, one shot at him. Granted, he was hung over and just woke up. But uh, I fought Michael Bedford and... Uh, The Dukes of the time, and and just I was just having fun, you know. This this was just fun. All I because all I wanted was to be invited, and uh, and then and then made it to the finals. So it was uh, it was fun. The silver dollar tourney hasn't happened in a really long time. For those uh, those of us that um, weren't around when it was still happening, can you explain what it is? Well, originally it was. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but uh, the patron who started it all put up uh, these uh, a bunch of silver dollars, 100, uh, all these silver dollars for the best fighters in the known world. And what it was, usually they would try to take the best fighter from each kingdom. And then if there was um, others, that uh, deemed they deemed worthy, they would add them. So you would see the best of the best, and it was sword and shield only. Uh, no thrusting, even though people thrusted me, but they didn't announce it at that time. <laughs> but it's supposed to be just just sword and shield, no thrusting, and the the best fighters in the known world. They're, they came from Drakenfold. So they put together, I can't remember, like 16, uh, a group of 16. And uh, to, so people could see amazing fights. It started to get a little ugly for a while. And uh, I think, you know, it's a, it's a big, big money prize tourney. So once you forget about the prize and just on the fight, then it's good. And that's that's what we wanted to see. The patron who saw that that fight on top there, me and Torval, came to us and said, no matter what, you have a lifetime membership in this tournament. 
So, so we had lifetime memberships. Other people had to be invited, but it, it was mostly because we put on such a good show. And, and we wanted to, because we're promoting on tier. That's, that's how we looked at it. You know, I talked to Torval afterwards. We, we wanted to show that on tier had the best fighters in the known world at that time. So that's what we, we tried to do. But the, the Silver Dirt Dollar Attorney at Estrella was originally the best fighters in the known world from all the kingdoms. And uh, Drakenwald, uh, uh, we, so we could get a, di a very diverse group of fighters and see different different styles and uh, different styles of the best of their area. And it was, it was a great thing to watch. And I just wanted to be invited. And then boom, got, got a lifetime membership. <laughs> uh, I always like to have fun as king. It, you know, just, just have fun. Our, our first crown up top, uh, we were given the words to uh, the Barbarian King, and it was about me. Uh, maybe it was about the big, I don't know. But uh, it was in a pizza box and stuff. It was just, just fun. That's why everybody's laughing. It was hilarious. Uh, bottom with the uh, officer. He was coming by. Hey, let's get a picture. So <laughs> just, just ha having fun. Because we wanted, I, I wanted, what I wanted in that picture was to show a true anachronism. Something out of place, out of time. So that's that's that picture. Uh, the one where I'm in the purple garb, we're just getting ready. Uh, me and Elowen, I am taking on all the the kids at the event in tug of war, and that was a blast. Kids loved it. I'm I'm working. Grendel comes to to, to my aid as as a good master. And then we're starting to beat the kids because there's so many of them. And then Elowen grabs the other end and she's she's extremely strong. She was a shot putter in college and everything. So she's got some muscle on her. And, and they destroyed us with, with her help. But uh, the kids loved it. I loved it. I like having fun as kids. What is, what is your, um, besides having fun, what's your favorite thing to do as king? Well, like everybody says, um, give them their first award. That means so much. Uh, and it's usually an award of arms. Um, they will remember you as their first king to give them an award of arms. It's, it's just so rewarding to give those de deserving better award. And there, I know that there's so many that are missed. It happens. We don't know everybody. It, I, I guess people assume we do, but uh, we have to go by, by letters of recommendation. So please, if you know somebody, recommend them for an award. It, that's how people get, get, get awards. But to give an award for those deserving, that is the best part of being king. However, I will say the first time I felt like a king, again, Alpine Pass War, which I absolutely love, my favorite event at the, of the time, I was king and I challenged a young squire to a race. So we're, we're in full armor and we say, okay, I'll go to that, that bush down there and back. Okay. So we're running. I thought I was pretty fast. We're pretty even coming around the bush. We're even I'm realizing he doesn't have real leg armor. <laughs> He's just got a piece of leather. So I, and I'm wearing steel legs. So I'm starting to, to fall behind. My knights noticed that just before the finish line, they grabbed the squire so I could win the race. 
that's when I felt like a king. My knights came to my rescue because the king could not lose the race. That's when I felt like a king. Very cool. It was. Uh, these are some squires. Uh, my first two squires there at the top, uh, Ty and Corin. Doesn't even look like my helm, but I'm sure he's polishing my helm as my squires did. Uh, Alaric in his amazing armor. What an amazing armor he was way before his time. He was doing that before anybody else was. Really proud. I mean, I, I taught him some basics, but boy, did he, he outperformed me leaps and bounds. And then also taught Bryn, uh, Helmschmied, uh, Sigmund. Uh, and then once Sigmund got with Ugo, even up his game even more. But yeah, they, they way outpaced me. Um, Elowen, she also made her own armor. So there, there's some squires and they're all peers. And uh, some more making a, a, a squire. I was, I was actually told that I needed to squire Wilhelm by, by the order of chivalry because he was kind of out of control and they felt I could rein him in. I said, I can't do it by myself. So John of Sky there from the West said, I'll help. So there, there's a squire that had two knights. Uh, Tyus there at the top. Uh, what a great guy. Everybody knows what a great guy Tyus is. Uh, Njal down there, uh, bottom left in, in, in my pants. He says, I want your genie pants. So he made pants like mine. And uh, I, apparently I was the first person to wear pants over leg armor because again, Torgal asked if it was okay if he could wear pants. And then why ask me? Well, you're the first person to do it. So that was also cool. And uh, making, making spires, uh, something I did. So yeah, 14 spires, 14 knights. Very cool. Look, it looks like Lurita is about to hit you in the background. Oh no, that's a scroll. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like she was in an action pose. <laughs> Ready to, to dump the Gatorade on. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, now, these these were real fun memories. The first one, yes, I wore a launch neck. So I was I was part of Barrick's uh, guard when he was uh, Prince of the Summits. And uh, my squire there on the far left, Brian, was now Brian Torkelson. Uh, that's the first and only time he says he will ever wear launch neck. So that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. And then at the bottom, uh, Conrad, the Conrad break, break ring, wanted to put together 13 warriors. So he chose his 13 fighters of the SCA uh, to take on the horde, which was... Uh, uh, just a, a bunch of other fighters. I believe when we fought them, we lost one. And I believe it was Jay. I'm not positive, but only because half of the other, the horde went after Jay because he was the best. So he, he took he took most of the brunt and, and held them off while we ended up slaughtering the other 30, and then came after the ones that killed Jay. Anyway, it was just a really fun event. This was also at, at Australia, I believe. And uh, and there's some who's who, some that are no longer with us, unfortunately, cancer. Um, but uh, great group, group of guys, and it was a it was an honor to be a part of these 13 warriors. SCA wedding, this was kind of fun. Uh, Gnar there was Odin, so he had a patch over one eye. Uh, Master Angus, also no longer with us, was Thor. Uh, uh, I don't know where she is, but Kyrie was Loki. So we, we had them all there at, uh, at this wedding. Uh, it, was, it was just really cool. It was uh, a fun little, Medieval wedding, uh, 
uh, with me and, and Elwin. And uh, I think this was before, before we reigned, or before she was queen. Yeah, yeah, it was before she was queen. But, All right. Yeah, just one time. All right, well, I think that's the last picture, so I will stop. There we go. So what what crown made you a lion? Uh, William and Siobhan. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes. Now, I told William that I did not want him to make me a lion. He said, whatever you do, do not make me a lion. And he said, OK. Towards the end of the reign, when I was called up, and then the lions were called up because that's the way I wrote it, is I want all the lions there so everybody can see who is who. Uh, I was a little upset. I, I did not want it coming from my son because I felt, you know, that's, that's not right. He assured me that this came from the lions themselves. I, I don't know whether it is or not, but, uh, or if it's just something he wanted to do. Uh, I, ho I hope it came from the lions, but uh, I, I, I accept it. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, William and Siobhan made me a lion, and uh, which is uh, the scroll. The big scroll right over my shoulder there at the bottom. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, but the big scroll there, and that was made by Ty. My son made me a, a, a lion, and my daughter made me the scroll. <laughs> You're muted again. I thought I, gosh, I'm having such problems tonight with that. Um, I had forgotten it was William, um, but I I just want to say something about like like uh, nepotism because I I think there is this tension and and I don't think it is nepotism because I think people um, that are close to you know you best and um, I think that they stepped out and and did someone they knew really well um, and that that has had a hand in shaping on tier. Um, really says volumes um, about um, how worthy they thought you were. Um, so I just I kind of want to take that away from you because um, I don't think there should be any stigma on that because, um, you know, we, we talk about writing award recommendations and we write award recommendations about people we know. And um, it's not nepotism to, to let people know that your friends are doing fantastic things. And, and regardless, it meant a lot to him to give it to me. So I can't take that away from him. Either. Yep. Yeah. And, and to me, the lion has always been um, representative of the crown that makes that lion. You know, it's, it's, it's a person who had a huge in, influence on that crown. Um, so it's totally natural that it would be you from him. It makes sense. Well, you make me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> I, mean, I feel good anyway, but uh, yeah, that, that, that. Well, you anticipated my next question because I was going to ask, you know, how it made you feel, but you you told us. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there something uh, like a goal or something in the SCA that you haven't done that you would like to do? Well, there, there were some things that I would have liked to have done and didn't. Um, as far as things I'd like to do, I would like to teach more. I am scheduled to do some more Pierceburg classes, but I 
feel bad because, like I said, with my Guillain Barre, I can't manipulate that saw as well, and I can't see. So, so it's very hard. But, but I love teaching. That's why, again, why I took. I'm taking a couple new squires. Uh, it, it keeps me learning. Anything that keeps me learning is good. So I don't know if there's really anything that I need or want to accomplish, but, uh, but yeah, I, I really would have uh, liked to have made uh, Laurelyn a duchess that she deserves. Um, I, I stopped that crown because I was, I, I, I felt an injury wasn't worth a crown. Uh, it's not that big. This is a game we play. And our leg popped. I didn't know what it was. It was very bad. And I was on my crutches that day. So, so I, I had to, and, and it was crown finals. And I was up one. So she could have been Duchess. And then, and then I've been, I was embarrassed for myself, which I shouldn't have been. And uh, didn't talk to her, and I just walked away, and uh, it made me shock. So I feel very, very bad for that. I, I really would have liked to have made her a duchess. She deserved that. I would like to see her a duchess. Um, but you know, I, I, I think that's sort of a natural reaction when you injure yourself in crown finals and you can't finish and something that you would really like to do for your cons your consort so i'm sure she understood she's a very understanding person what they asked if she wanted to do it another day the next day and i said that would not be fair to my opponent that is giving me an unfair advantage it's not fair to them this is something that happened during the tournament in the tournament uh, and I, it's not, it's not fair to my opponent. So, so I said, no. Um, is there anything that you wanted to talk about tonight that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, I could go over my uh, sword making technique. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, we don't have to. <laughs> well, um, but there is something. Okay. That the big hammer, the story of the big hammer that a lot of people have talked about on previous episodes and everybody's gotten wrong. That large, that really cool hammer, uh, it was not the hammer of state, it's not the muck and tall mall. The muck and tall mall is something completely different. The great club is completely different. That hammer was made by my squire at the time, uh, Master Sir Alaric von, von Rottweil. He made this really, really cool hammer. When I won crown the second time, what was given to the crown prince to remind them of the weight of the crown that's about to be bestowed upon you was this big, heavy mace, solid steel ball, steel spikes coming out of it, weighed a ton. I remember when Dak said it rolled around the back of his uh, little Volvo ripping up the carpet. I remember one time when it was stuck um, with point down in soft ground at an angles, and it fell over and almost impaled the Black Lion Herald's foot. It went through her shoe, luckily not her foot. This was a danger. So when I won second, my second crown and was given this mace, I caught had a con consult with the, the uh, exchequers, with the 
uh, Seneschal, Kingdom Seneschal, and previous crowns and said, we got to get rid of this. They agreed, auctioned it off. Rothanor actually won the auction. I don't know what happened to it afterward. Alaric gave me that hammer to use it instead. Use this for a while, you know, borrow this. So I used it during when I was crown prince. Well, the next crown just assumed it would be theirs. And then Willem wanted it because he was my squire. So I wanted to replace it because it didn't belong to, it, it was on loan to the crown. So I made, I, I got a uh, big giant burl. I don't know what happened to that big club that was a burl to use instead. Cause I thought that was really cool looking. Uh, it disappeared. The hammer made, made a reappearance. Then a certain crown prince at Ontario West War left it on the field. It disappeared. Now it's fuzzy on where and what happened to it for the next couple of years. Um, it eventually showed up here and there. It showed up with the Baron of Three Mountains, um, also my squire. And then to the next Baron of Three Mountains, Roland. And it disappeared here and there and, and actually made its way back to me when I used it as when I was crown print, when, when I was Prince of the Summits. So it became the hammer of the summits for a while. It still is. Kenrick, we need it back. So Vren uh, Sigmund, who was Alaric Squire, wants it back. It's rightfully his. This has all been on loan all this time. It has never been really um, the kingdoms or the principalities. It's on loan from Alaric. Sigmund would like it back, but he says he will replace it with something very cool. So Kenrick, I can get it back. You'll get something really cool in return. So anyway, the uh, the, the big hammer is that it, it it was my squires. It was it's really cool, really neat, but has been on loan and has been through its story of its own, which I actually wrote. The actual story, which is fairly long, this is a short version, and uh, used it as a, it's called, it's hammer time. <laughs> and uh, that the story is, was a uh, fundraiser for the summits. So anyway, yeah, I, I just wanted to clear up that that hammer is not the Muckintal Mall. The Muckintal Mall looks like a giant long baseball bat, skinny. Um, the, uh, Great club is the borough. Um, the mace of state was a mace, so it's none of those. It was on loan to the kingdom when I was prince because I got rid of the kingdom's mace of state. So that's the story of the hammer. I just wanted to clear that up. Well, thank you. <laughs> you see, you know, it, it, it hangs around for six reigns and all of a sudden it's, it's the thing. Exactly. And everybody wants it because it is so cool. The burl is pretty cool too. So should I ask the the last ten? All right, let's do it. Um, if you could fight anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, I've been thinking about this one. I I would like to fight Reynolds. I would have a chance when I went to my buyer's second nighting in the, in the pit room. Uh, he was there, but I didn't have my armor. Um, Brenos would be one. Uh, again, I've got to fight Barrett from Down Under. We've got unfinished business. <laughs> and, uh, and he's back fighting, and I know, I know he wants to fight. So we had some epic battles. We, we had fun. I still don't know how to use the sword. Please teach me. But... Uh, uh, most everybody I fought, I think, I don't remember, but uh, uh, 
but Brannels, I have not fought. And uh, although I, I believe I will try to get to the next um, uh, Adult Swim so I can find everybody. It's a super good time Adult Swim is. Um, yeah. So, um, if you haven't told it already, what's your favorite 20th year story? Uh, it was getting kicked out of the two chucks camp. That, that's my favorite. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was just too dangerous for the two chucks. <laughs> Which is, you know, that's ironic. What, that's what you get for being the next stunt man. You can, you can do some things. And I was fairly young. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite medieval esque or period movie? Oh, I guess I got to go with um, A Knight's Tale, because it was just recently out there again. I, 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 I really like it, and I uh, don't like a couple people in it, but uh, it, it's, it's fun. It's just a fun romp, and it's, it's actually very early SEA-like, um, which is different than the first one, which was uh, Knight Riders, which was very SEA like except with motorcycles, but it was supposed to be. And uh, and that was my first introduction to an SCA movie. <laughs> 90 minutes too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, who is your favorite fight ever? Uh, well, uh, Eric from Down Under, and then uh, a couple really good ones with Torgel, uh, Steingrim, and Hans from the West. Uh, we, we fought at uh, oh, the tournament where, uh, where Uh, we, we we lost you again. Oh, um, there you go. The uh, the tournament where uh, Royals put together a team of a of a fighter, a squire, a mod, and a, a officer. The, and so the Rose tourney at Great Western War. Yes, that one. And I fought Hans there. That was that was a blast. I mean, he he's just so much fun. Uh, Helga also, but uh, but yeah, my all time favorite is is always the go-to with uh, Duke Eric um, and the other Duke Eric. We, we had some fun, fun fights too. Uh, on tears, on tears, Duke Eric. Uh, uh, they're both on tears, Duke. They're both, yeah. The one that wasn't <laughs> Arthur or Loki. <laughs> right. Anyways. Um, what event have you never been to that you would like to go to? Well, and I came back to the other I didn't want to come back to Ontario again. So I went and I traveled. And that's when I traveled all the sports and a bunch of other kind of blast. When I get taken to shooting was uh, Lily's. So I, I kind of wanted to go to Lily's and I heard it terrible, but I thought it was a really good, good thing. So, so Lily's Adult Swim is not really an event, but I go to that. But yeah, as far as events, the only fight I missed out on was Lily. I've been to pretty much everything. Yeah, I've heard great things about yeah. I've heard great things about Lily's War. It's supposed to be just fantastic. Um, what's your favorite in Kingdom tradition? Well, most people say the uh, the Ring of Steel. That's very cool. Um, I'm a little partial to the lion. Uh, since we created it, uh, the ring of steel, it's, it's really hard to beat. That's, it's very cool. It's, it's visually when, when, very Go ahead. when done correctly. Yeah. Um, let's see. What book would you recommend to a squire or a new fighter to read? Uh, I've been thinking about this one too. I, I 
I've, I've just been reading uh, Genghis Khan and the making of the uh, the modern world. That's that's just very kind of a very cool read. But as far as to recommend someone coming up, someone fighting, either it is someone that needs to create uh, some goals and how to keep those goals and uh, and attain those goals is Water the Bamboo. Water the, the Bamboo by uh, Greg Bell. It, uh, it, it's very good and very informative, and mostly about team, but you can use it as an in individual as well. And it's, it's uplifting, but it'll keep you on track on your goal. You set a goal or goals. This will teach you how to attain those goals. And then once you attain those, how do you keep putting other goals so you, you, you've never finished attaining your goal? in life. So water the, ba water the bamboo. Very good, very good read for anyone. Great. I'm, I'm writing that down and adding it to my list because I don't, I think that's the first time I've heard that book. Please read it. Very good. Um, who was your biggest influence or mentor? Uh, Montfrey, who, who helped me, like he said, I will teach you how to be king. So he taught me the uh, how to be a royal and still have fun and still realize this is a game. And this none of this is for you. It's for all those people out there. So for him, for, for my SCA uh, royalty, I guess that's through him. And then as far as my, my arts and Everything would obviously be Torgal, uh, huge influence, still is. Um, I would like to be half as good as he is someday. I mean, he's so amazing. I am so blessed to have taken a class from him. One of his, his last, last intro that he taught. So <laughs> that's very cool. I, I'm thankful. He has had such an impact on, on Tier. Um, like for decades, even after he's really stopped playing. It's pretty incredible. Anyway, if you had to recommend um, one Ontarian event to someone from out of kingdom to come to, which one would it be? Well, early SCA, it would have been Eggles. When Eggles was the place to go, uh, people from the West came to Eggles. I mean, that, that was amazing. It still is, but it can't be as big as it was which is why we lost one of our sites. We, we just outgrew everything. Um, in today's on tier, it would obviously be Sport of Kings. You just can't beat it. Um, I've been teaching from the first one. If you want to teach me this one, I will teach my uh, sword making class. I've taught that a few times. Everybody asked me to teach it again. Um, if Atias isn't teaching it, I would. I would. But uh, yeah, Sport of Kings, if you can go to it, please, please go to it because it, it also feels like a medieval college. You go from point to point of an outdoor school in, uh, in the Middle Ages. It's amazing. Put yourself back there and suck up everything you can. Sport of Kings, hands down. I concur, my favorite. <laughs> Okay, uh, last question. What do you think is the most important characteristic to becoming a successful fighter? Uh, persistence. Uh, to be successful, learn how to lose. You have, to, you, you have to learn gracefully, learn how to lose, take it, and you always learn from a loss. That's how you get better. You find somebody better than you, get beat up by them, learn everything. Someday you'll beat them. And uh, and there's always somebody better than better than you, no matter what. There's always somebody better than you. And when you, when you get beat by them, you're learning something. Learn how to lose. 
I think a, a lot of us have a lot of practice in losing. So, <laughs> um, Don, you want to talk about next week? Um, thank you so much, by the way. Um, That's what the do we talk over each other? Sorry, I was going to say that's where the learn comes from. Learn. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, coming up this week uh, on Saturday, uh, Rifkin and I are interviewing uh, Candice Beatrice from Lockock. Uh, she is currently the Kingdom Seneschal of Lockock and has been uh, integral in. Uh, formulating their uh, re-entry and their COVID uh, rules and has been uh, working as uh, kind of a consultant to a lot of different kingdoms. So um, plus she's super cool. So it'll be a really interesting interview. And then Sunday you have a leveling, leveling up. Yeah, um, I'm having my, my, my dukes and duchesses and countess and viscountesses back to talk about um, reigning and uh, what it takes to prepare to reign and um, what it takes during the rain, and that should be super um, informative. The last one was really well received, so I'm looking forward to talking to them again. And I'm looking forward to watching. I really enjoyed the first episode. Uh, and then Tuesday, um, we have uh, Marion Starveld from the Summits on A Branch of Laurels. Um, she's been Princess of the Summits, Baroness of uh, Adiantum, and uh, she's one of uh, uh, Octima Sade, my husband, was uh, one of her sergeants and has been very formative uh, in his STA career, and she's just super cool. So uh, we'll talk to her. And then uh, next Wednesday, we are interviewing Baron Justin de Leon. Well, excellent. Another very uh, cool night from Montier. Very thoughtful dude. That yep. should be good. Yeah. So that's what we have coming up this week. So I thank you, Your Grace, for coming on and sharing your photos and, and your stories. It's been um, really quite interesting, and I'm sure everybody would agree that that's hung out with us tonight. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, and wrap, Kate. Sorry about the uh, sound. Sorry about the, uh, the mic. That's all right. I think I think we got 95% of it. So it's yeah. Awesome. So thanks everyone for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Thanks, Grace. Good night. Thank you. Good night.